Welcome everyone to our weekly webinar for the CMOT CMOOC. So this is our fifth webinar, we're into week five. We've had a few technical issues this morning, but we seem to have finally got a couple of people joined and uh, we'll have a good discussion around collaboration and communication, which is quite poignant really. Um, <laughs> so with me today, we have Neil, all the way from New York apparently at this stage, but Neil is normally in Japan. So what are you doing in, in uh, New York, Neil? Um, I don't know if you've heard of something called the Model United Nations, um, but it's uh, something that high school students and university students do. Um, it's a massive role play and simulation. And so there's about 2,000 students in, in New York doing basically copying what the United Nations do. So I have four students here and they represent uh, Botswana. And, okay. Uh, so not not the pen. No, no, you don't represent your own country. Um, it's to try and, you know, improve your sort of empathy for other places. Okay. Um, so you get assigned a group of students? No, I, I, they're my students back in Japan who have come to New York with me, um, and then they join their different committees. So they, they were on a climate change committee was one, and then um, – uh, disaster relief was another and they oh, spent, I see. so you get assigned the country you, you're investigating yeah okay. they spend about four days you know coming up with with solutions for those problems right right i thought you mean your students were from botswana <laughs> no, no, no there are there are some students from africa but not uh not botswana actually no. right okay and um with us also we have paul paul divine from nelson and uh, hey, Tom. do you want to introduce who's with you there, Paul? Yes, uh, Tom, this is uh, Simon Schmidt, who is a learning designer. Uh, you may not have met Simon. I think he started after you or in Nelson. Oh, You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good to have you on board. Uh, got some of these webinars from the, from the outside. Right, okay being one of the uh, silent uh, viewers. Yes. <laughs> well, that's good. Good to have you on board and have you as part of the discussion today. Thank you. So, yeah, something's gone a little bit fiddly with Hangouts. It only seems to be working in Chrome properly at the moment. But anyway, we got there. So collaboration and communication, that's kind of our topic. And, uh, you know, as I, as I said, obviously what we're doing right now is communicating and collaborating. So... The, uh, the webinar series is, is obviously one way of showing involvement in collaboration and communication. So if you have been part of the discussions, um, obviously there's a record there. We have a playlist that's on YouTube, and uh, that might be something that you'd like to put into your evidence in your CMOP portfolio. If, if, uh, if you like, is, you know, perhaps select one or two of the webinars and your contribution to them and, and uh, discuss that. Or perhaps how you use uh, collaborative technologies to facilitate um, you know communication across geography across time zones and uh, I know it sounds like Neil does quite a bit of that uh, what about Nelson Paul I mean do you use various collaboration communi communication tools for sort of external students or networking etc uh, yes we we do have trial various tools and things. Um, Simon probably has more hands-on as, as far as working with students. Yeah, we, yes. we have a, a, a sub-campus over in Marlborough, so we have a lot of students who have to either video call into a classroom. Um, sometimes there's only one student who's remotely over there, and so we have some solutions around those and some potential improvements around them as well. Um, okay, so yeah. what what um, what are some of the issues you think around having um, you know remote students and bringing them into that sort of face to face class environment? The one that we're sort of struggling with, the right we're looking at at the moment is that the we've got classrooms that are set up with a nice big um, screen so we can video conference call in um, students into a classroom here. And that sounds really good until it's time to do some group work. And so then the Marlboro students have to sort of stay in their group and the Nelson students group up over here. And what we'd really like to be able to do is 
for anybody in any location to group in together. So we're sort of considering some of the potential um, options for those. Do you think it has to be synchronous? Maybe the group work could be more asynchronous. It could be. It could be more asynchronous. And again, that's something we're looking at with, um, I suppose, the modern teaching techniques that we're people aren't so, you know, spoken to in a classroom anymore. It's much more interactive and much more group-based and a lot of self-directed activity that that suits that asynchronous kind of um, system a lot better. And but, yeah. but connecting that technology with the, the technique as well. Yeah, so then the, the, uh, the issue comes down to, I guess, staff development, staff experience of being able to facilitate a, yeah. an, a, uh, an asynchronous um, learning environment because as you say, they're all used to sort of standing in front of a class and delivering it face to face. Exactly. So it is something that a lot of the tutors here are starting to think about themselves as well. So it's, it's nice to sort of have that progress. So really we're in, I suppose you call it the infancy of that sort of moving to that next step. Yeah, um, yeah it's, it's being, being considered nicely here. It, and we we kind of have this Microsoft infrastructure here where we have Skype for business and all that, but yeah, that's a little bit clunky. And so if you're using Jitsi for your... We're using a few different technologies, but yeah, it's uh, Skype for business does seem to put another extra couple of layers on top of what you might need. Um, but we have used Jitsi and... Um, Meet in. What's the other one? Was it? Uh, yeah, no, that's not the name of it. No, of course not. <laughs> but but Jitsi kind of seems to be a really kind of low tech solution that works really easily, really well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I guess there's, there's, there's you know there's several issues, and and this is all relevant to you know the reflection around communication and collaboration. Um, what what's kind of like the the cultural the ethos of the tool that you that you're using, and does it reinforce uh, a teacher centric environment, or is it more of a tool that will allow you to have more of a peer to peer based um, you know community feel? So I guess that that for me is why I tend to use Google Hangouts because it's more focused around a group discussion, mm. um, and it facilitates that rather than being a one to many which you know collaborate or um, uh, other tools tend to have much more of a focus on a one to many and kind of re emphasize, you know, big lecture, large class sort mm -hmm. of environment and a very teacher centered environment. Mm -hmm. um, one, of, one of the other tools that seems very popular is Zoom, uh, which I think is quite robust and, and allows you to have more of a discussion format as well. Have you played with Zoom? A little bit, um, but one of the things I have found, which I would, no, I'm very keen to investigate further, is Zoom connects with um, the Swivel device, um, which they, they develop those mainly for um, sort of remote teachers looking at the classroom from a remote perspective. But there seems to be some, uh, which got it's, it's quite personable because you follow the class and it turns to whoever's got the microphone and follows them. And if that can connect them with Zoom, and then you can kind of have what I've termed a remote student, like they exist in, with a physical presence in the classroom and can be moved around, and they'll follow a microphone if somebody's talking, and the microphone can be passed around. So it gives that remote student a physical presence in the classroom so they can then interact with other students, whether it be um, part of a lecture or in a smaller group. Um, yeah, we've had a little bit of a play with um, early versions of the swivel, and it uh, it had um, the one we played with had a little Bluetooth, you know, like a lapel microphone that you put yeah. on there, and it it, um, it followed the Bluetooth microphone, uh, but it had a bit of a time lag, so it was quite a, quite annoying. So you'd move, and then you'd wait for the swivel to sort of catch up, and by the time you'd got there, you'd move back, you know. Um, so I'm not quite sure where it's at now, but we found it just that too much clunky and kind of got in the way. Yeah, they've used them to video a few um, sessions here, um, and it does seem to be fairly responsive in the ones I've seen, but it's, okay. it's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What about you, Neil? What, in your context, what sort of tools do you use for 
you know, remote collaboration and communication? Um, well, I had to, uh, it's going to sound very uh, primitive compared to you guys, but the, the other day preparing for this New York trip, there was a student in Singapore and the, the, uh, they, we just carried um, a phone around. Um, so they were, talk they were just talking and they, they joined in. So it was like having a little, a little TV person there. <laughs> and everybody took it in turns to, uh, there were two students, one was in Japan, but not near the campus. So there were two phones going around. It was a workshop with about 20 people. And so they could join in the, the group discussion. You know, we divided into smaller mm -hmm. groups. Mm -hmm. There was just one person sitting there, and then you'd look at the phone and say, oh, what, what do you think, you know? Okay. You know what I mean? and it, it worked really well. Um, um, and it was, yeah. it was just Skype. Yeah. That's, that's what it was, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm a big fan of, of keep it simple and low-key approaches and, and definitely mobile access. Um, so it's, it's part of the... The reason that I like something like, say, Hangouts or or FaceTime or Skype that has a mobile app because, yeah, you can use it on your phone. So occasionally I've joined, you know, Hangouts with um, when I'm on the train commuting. Oh, right. Um, right. You know, or I've, uh, uh, you know, a participant has been walking down the street uh, on their way to the office and has joined in. So Laurent's done that quite quite a few times. Which is quite nice because it gives you a different dynamic, different atmosphere. You can yeah. see what they're doing as well. You get to see the environment they're in. Mm, yeah. <laughs> there's a uh, there's a great episode of Modern Family. I don't know if you've seen it. <laughs> no, I try to avoid it. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Bill Dumphy is kind of missing out on the family event, and so he arranges. Um, it's an iPad mounted on a. Sick on a segway. Yeah, 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 <laughs> you control it, Rob. Have you seen that? Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's brilliant. It's worth watching. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, <laughs> there's, there's actually, that, that actually exists um, now. Some of those sort of, uh, I've seen research studies, um, actually most of it coming out of Japan, Neil, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of, of uh, remote access from students who may, you know, uh, right. maybe a reason they might be in a hospital or they just right. physically can't get to class, but it's effectively like a segue with an iPad in class and the student is, is remotely joining it via video, but also uh, controlling the uh, the robot and moving it around the room. So they're kind of, they're kind of physically there via, via a robot avatar. Okay. Kind of interesting. Yeah. yeah. So uh, let me just do a little bit of screen um, sharing here. Um, yeah, let's see. What can I share? Yes, I know. I've got so many windows open now, I can't remember which is the right window. <laughs> Let's just go entire screen. Okay. okay. There's a lot of windows. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's because I was trying to join via everything before and uh, get, get the thing working. Okay, so hopefully you now see um, Safari. You don't want to see my calendar. Um, and so on the WordPress site for the CMOC, cmook.wordpress.com, we are basically our CMOC hub. And see we've got a post there on week five um, and just sort of looking through what are some of the aspects that you could put into a CMOP portfolio around collaboration and communication so with any part of your portfolio I think it's good to try to link it back to the learning theory why are you in, involved in collaboration why do you think it's important for either your professional practice or for your students in a learning environment you know why do uh, communication and collaboration um, you know there is significant research out there that says it's important for learning so if you're a social constructivist then learning happens in groups you know we learn from our peers from more expert peers from experts etc so the zone of professional development from Vygotsky you know we can only learn so much by ourselves in isolation but with a more expert peer there we can go further than, the, than that um, so looking at why 
the why I think is important when you come to your reflection in any part of your portfolio, just to, to think about, you know, why are you doing what you're doing? Why is this uh, informing your practice? Is it just because it's something you've always done or you do intuitively or is there actually a theoretical reason underpinning it? Um, and if you can bring some learning theory in there, I think that's quite valuable. So I've just linked to a couple of people there. We've got Laurel Ard and uh, Weaver um, talking about basically peer collaboration for practitioners. Um, why would we work together? I mean, quite often lecturers work in isolation develop their own courses, deliver it themselves, and don't necessarily even get feedback from uh, another colleague. So that idea of collaboration in teaching quite often is a little bit of a foreign concept as well. Um, a lot of the stuff that I've done is, is collaborating with people overseas, so expert practitioners all around the world. And of course, then the use of technology becomes imperative because we just can't do that without technology. Um, so working with people, I was just discussing with Neil earlier in Coventry. I uh, work a lot with the University of Coventry over there. And uh, we need asynchronous tools because they're always in bed when I'm awake and vice versa, you know. So the synchronous thing can be quite difficult. And finding a crossover time can be quite difficult when they're 12, 13 hours out of sync with us. So once again... Um, suggesting that if you've got an example that you want to share from your portfolio or you're developing for your portfolio share that in the project pack and uh, um, this week we've we've had one from from neil so i'll just open up the project bank neil is is being quite active in this version of the cmic which is great interestingly of all the sections of the portfolio, uh, the project bank, this has the least. So I'm kind of wondering, you know, why? Why do we have so few examples in collaboration and communication? Is this something people find difficult or do they find difficult to share? Uh, I'm not sure, but I like uh, Neil's example here. Do you want to talk it, uh, us through it a little bit, Neil? Sure, yeah, if you... I'll just click on the link for you. Tell me, <laughs> tell me which bit you want me to talk about. I, I think um, there might be one reason is because your um, example is so extraordinary. <laughs> oh, okay. You think I've scared people off? <laughs> I, I, well, I, I don't know if that's the case, but it, it it really does read, you know, like you are Mr. World Collaboration. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so maybe maybe I should delete my entry. <laughs> <laughs> I should probably put one up there. That just make everyone feel better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was, yeah. Get an example from Paul, and then we can all go. Oh, I feel sorry for Paul. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Paul. I'm just. Uh, you know. <laughs> hey, you know that's that's something I hadn't thought of, Neil. That's a good point. Yeah, maybe you know I've gone a little bit over the top of my example. But yeah, talk us through yours. Um. Yeah, I think. It's not something uh, like most of the topics on this um, uh, CMALT. It, it, it's not something I've really thought about, to be honest. So this was an, a, a, another new area to reflect on. Um, so half my the end my entry half of it is about basically without using technology the previous right. collaborations that I've uh, I've done, and then the second half is. Um, I have done collaboration and communication with technology, but not really thought about it. So I, I used the the map that you suggested just to plot, you know, people that I've been in touch with or projects I've come up with with others overseas. And um, I, I was quite pleased actually to see I could put a lot of pins on the map. Um, so, so was that the first time you'd done a, uh, a Google Map for that? That's right. Yes, that that was. Yeah. Well, it's cool, and, and it's something you can keep on building, I think. Um, and it's very graphical. It's, it gives you a con, you know, a, a, an idea, a, a very visual map of your global impact. I think that's great. Yeah, well, it, it's uh, thank you, thank you for that. It's your your idea, and it's it is it's a nice thing to do, actually. I must I must admit, it takes a little bit of time to build up, but. Um, it, 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 I was very pleased to see so many dots uh, and dots I wouldn't have 
I wouldn't have thought about uh, unless I'd followed your example. So, so thanks for that. That's all right. No, I like that. That's um, that's nice. I want to put a few more New Zealand ones in there. Um, <laughs> you, you're looking for invites to New Zealand, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah <exactly. laughs> well, it would be a good plug for our um, Sotel uh, Symposium every February. So uh, you were you were here, and that's how we made that contact, Neil. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Cool. Hey, um, so yeah, just recommend that people put some examples there and give some feedback. So um, we've had a little bit of a feedback there um, from myself and Neil on, on that project. So great. Um, so another suggestion I made for this week as well is one way of showing collaboration is to curate activity. And one way I do that is uh, by using Twitter. So part of the reason for using Twitter is it for me is becomes a record of activity. So when I'm doing something, it's very easy to take a photo of it. Obviously I like coffee um, and then tweet it. So this is when I was last in Coventry uh, actually. So we were talking about Coventry before. So this example is just a curation of the activity uh, that I had at Coventry Un University when I was there for a couple of weeks in 2017. So it's just all the tweets. That looks a little bit too sophisticated for Coventry. Are you, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> so um, one, one of the things that interesting things they did uh, as part of their disruptive media learning lab is they uh, done a few projects with um, Lego. Mm -hmm. um, so using Lego as kind of like a brainstorming social construction tool uh, from a you know very low tech sort of a um, point of view. But what they did as part of it is they got a custom Lego. Uh, character made, which was the Dean of Teaching and Learning, that's him there. So they got a custom run of Lego uh, people made. Mm. And if you've met him, that's quite like him. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. So the social element for me is big. There's me having lunch with, um, <laughs> with, with one of my colleagues there from, from Coventry. Um, and yeah yeah so for me it's just a very graphical way of of recording events and all you have to do is remember to tweet um and what i do is i then co uh, curate those via a hashtag or you go into your timeline and choose the tweets that are relevant to that activity that you're curating obviously coffee again is, is quite you know highlighted in my uh, list of activities while i was there my, my nephew works in Costa Coffee in uh, Coventry City Centre. Oh, okay. Is he one of the, uh, they have the, what do they call him, the Brewster Extraordinaire or something? Or he, he, he does have a little label. He's a high school student, but he, it's his part-time job, and he, he has got a barista sort of qualification. Yeah, because only the, you have to get a second qualification to be able to do the flat whites because uh, not everyone can do a flat white properly. Right, yeah. And he, he told me recently what a flat white was, and I, I didn't. <laughs> See, we're, we're, we're giving, you know, really helping your education here, Neil. You are. <laughs> so uh, the, other, the other way that we can collaborate and communicate and show examples is that, of course, is through the social forum on the, so, the uh, CMOT, CMOOC, Moodle Community Forum, which we've developed. And... Um, so just a bit of a plug for our social forum there. And if you have a look at those, unfortunately, it's mostly me at this point, but um, Neil has done a few posts there. Um, a few other people have, but just encourage people to, to interact on that forum there as a sort of a social side and sharing ideas, um, asking questions, et cetera, for the CMOOC. Um, perhaps another idea for sharing collaboration communication is getting involved in, in publishing and peer review. Um, so it just happens that we're launching our own journal, another plug, Pacific Journal of Technology Enhanced Learning. We're hoping to basically launch it uh, for next month. So if you want to find a home for doing your publications about technology enhanced learning, then we have a home for you, the Pacific Journal of Technology Enhanced Learning, and we will be looking for reviewers. Uh, and if you want to get on board, there's a sign-up sheet there for reviewers. So Paul, Neil, um, and uh, everyone else who wants to sign up as a reviewer, go and do it right now. Click that link. <laughs> it's a Google form. Okay. So I'm going to head back and stop presenting, everyone. There we go.
because that's enough of me talking. Um, so yeah, it's it's. I guess this part of the portfolio is really providing evidence of of collaboration, communication, and various aspects of teaching and learning, and how technology has been used for that. How you use technology to be able to facilitate that, and and obviously if you're doing that over uh, time zones or over geography, then you need to use technology to be able to do that of some sort. And it could be as simple as email. Um, but then the key obviously is is also what's the impact of that practice? What's the impact for your practice as a as a teacher, as a academic developer, as a learning consultant, whatever your role is? Uh, and what's the impact for your students? What are some of the issues around using these tools? And you know, from our own experience this morning, there's issues around does it work? Does it work in does the latest version of Hangouts work in Safari? Uh, or not, or do we all have to now use Chrome, uh, etc.? So, the, one of the issues is that tools keep changing. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, something you use regularly for a year or so then disappears. You like Google Plus, um, which I've used a lot with students, but um, I have to think of something else now. Yeah, yeah. So you did refer to that in your. Um, uh, portfolio entry which is good so yeah it's kind of like okay what do we use then um, if our favorite tool does disappear um, and that's just life with particularly with social media because the the, uh, the money trail um, we're not paying for that service uh, what the business is getting out of it is they're advertising they're getting our data about us this you know other companies can then sell us stuff through advertising um, or do we go the institutional route and, and you know subscribe to something like you know collaborate? Uh, um, you know, what are the issues around that for, for for student access? You know, so all certainly issues that that need discussing. Well, also any questions, any other thoughts from our erudite uh, panelists today? No, no. Cool. Well, well I, yeah, I just want to say thanks, Tom, because you it was really an, an area I haven't thought about, and uh, it's been very interesting to to sort of uh, almost not look not not so grand as looking at my life afresh, but looking at certain aspects of it afresh and and rethinking about how to project yourself. I think that you know it's almost like projecting an identity, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And in, in online, we all have. You can have multiple identities actually for depending on the community that you're working with so you know you can have a professional identity you can have a social identity uh mm. yeah i mean that's that's part of the benefit i suppose of online tools is that you can amplify just part of your character that's relevant for that community so you know my family stuff is in a completely different domain to the stuff that I do professionally and also my social activity online is quite different as well. So you have different personalities and you, you target different groups with different tools as well. So that's one way I do it is, you know, I use different tools for different communities mm. uh, and that way you can separate them out. So that for me is the, is the, the issue around using something like Facebook where you can't, you it's really difficult to filter different streams of, of, uh, communities, um, because the ethos is, you know, that's it's there for everyone, and your data is not your data; it belongs to Mark Zuckerberg, you know. Yeah. So, so, so the paper I'm doing at the moment um, is uh, for my study is um, on agile management, and um, the class is divided up into four teams. This has been quite interesting, and each team is kind of negotiating their own kind of collaboration tools and things like that and i joined in week two my team and they use messenger for everything and there's this huge long string of messages about the project uh, which i think is not very agile and it keeps going till like 11 at night yeah yeah um, it's it's been really interesting to watch not in our team us negotiating what the best collaboration tool is and you know so we're using now Microsoft Teams with Trello embedded in it um, 
and no other te you know, other teams are using SharePoint plus um, WhatsApp, and it's, it's kind of really interesting to watch it kind of develop and each to you know kind of watch what the other teams are using. Yeah. Really yeah, I think, I think it becomes a negotiated process, and I think that's part of, you know, in the process of choosing a communication and collaboration tool, you can build into that process with your students, you know, negotiation with them and say, you know, well, we don't necessarily want to use Facebook just because everyone's on it, you know, maybe it becomes a negotiated process. What is the more appropriate tool for us to use uh, to support this class or this project? You know, maybe Microsoft Teams, it could be... Um, uh, Slack, it could be Trello if it's a, a project that needs, you know, yeah. you know, points along the way. A project management type of tool might be much more um, relevant. So by building that negotiation in, um, you get them on board as well, rather than saying, okay, this is what we're doing, this is what we're using, and that's it. And they have no say, and it's more teacher centric. Um, yeah, well, I, yeah, you know, at the same time, you've got to you've got to be able to communicate. So you've got to agree what are you going to use. Yeah, I think it was either courageous of, of, of the tutor just to leave that unspecified and to leave as part of the agile process is kind of negotiating this and, fight, you know, kind of working through the discomfort of being in the team that, you know, we haven't agreed on how we're going to talk to each other yet or, you know, we've the team had started off using one thing and, and like it's not really working. Is there something better? Let's try that. And it kind of it kind of got us into the mindset of experimenting and then evaluating what you know how mm. it's working. So his process of kind of taking the hands off and it was actually I think really worthwhile for our team. There's maybe another couple of teams which they're probably still lost. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, well, that's, that's really rich, um, uh, you know, ground for reflection and what is the value of of these different technologies for enhancing collaboration yeah. and communication, you know? I think that that's that, that would be a great example to write up. Yeah. Hey, well, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. We did start a little bit late, but uh, it's probably about time that we finish the uh, the webinar now. So thank you, Neil. Oh, thank and, you. Thanks a lot. And what time is it in New York at the moment? Oh, it's uh, about quarter past six in the uh, on Thursday uh, evening. Right. Yeah. So about dinner time. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, it's the same time as up here in Auckland and Nelson. It's the benefit of being the same country. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that's it for today. Well, we'll stop the broadcast and we'll have our next webinar next Friday. So thank you for um, joining us today. Great, thank you.